let's try and solve the 14th question first take a minute or two and try to solve the 14th question it's a nice simple question Hi Vikas, you have joined the class. Uh, we are just about starting. Can you try to solve the 14th question for us? Any answers? 14th question? Okay. Let me first ask you guys a question. In which year was the number of males the highest amongst all the years which was given? In which year was the number of males highest? Two thousand eleven Vikas Meghna number of males was highest in two thousand eleven. Okay. Let me tell you the answer. The answer is cannot say indeterminate. Let me explain to you why. Okay? You have to understand this data which is given to you first. What they are showing by this data is the ratio of male to female students. So what they are saying is in the year 2000 okay in the year 2000 the number the ratio of males to females is 2.5 what does that mean the number of male to females could be 25 and 10 or could be 250 and 100 or could be any ratio which is in this format x is to 2.5x right the next year it became 3 it does not have any connection with this number let me tell you what was the what could be a possible number of males and females in this year it could be 3 million males and 1 million females in one year it is 25 and 10 and the other year it is 3 million and 1 million. What would be the ratio of males to females if it is 3 million and 1 million? 3. So, this could be 3 million. 2. This could be 200 and 100. Or it could be 2000 or 1000. It is just a ratio. So, can I say that this year is the highest male to female ratio? This could be just 1 male and one female, the ratio is 1 is to 1. One male to one female, the ratio is 1 is to 1. We cannot answer this question. Have you understood it? Okay. So, now let us go back to answering our question. These were uh, random numbers that I have used out here. Now let us try to answer the question which has been given to us. The ratio of male to female students in a college for 5 years is plotted. If the number of female students doubled in 2009. So let me say male, female, 2008 and 2009. Now let me assume uh, in 2008 the ratio is 2.5. So let me assume it to be 250 and 100. It is given to us. Female students doubled in 2009, which means this is going to become 200. The ratio is of 3, which means this is going to be 600. Therefore, what is the question? What is the percent number of males increased? Right? Percentage 
increase equals the difference divided by the original value into 100. Now what is the difference from here to here? The difference is 350 divided by the original value which was 250 into 100 which would be 140 percent. Mind you, if we had taken any other value here of male, female instead of 100 and 250, let us you have taken it as 10 and 25. Then the next year this would have become 20 and this would have become 60. Still the percentage changes 140 percent. Is it okay? Alright, so using the same data, try to answer the 15th question now. So the answer is 150 is to 100, okay, because I agree, 3 is to 2. Uh, I would not write the answer as 3 is to 2 or with a is to symbol. I will write the answer as 1.5, which is the same thing as 3 is to 2, okay. The reason I am writing it as 1.5 is, this is a numerical question. Okay, in a numerical question, the way the gate input screen works or the evaluation technique works is it cannot evaluate a 3 is to 2, a ratio. It can only evaluate numbers, integers. Okay, uh, if the answer is 1.50, it will accept even a 1.5, but it would not accept a 3 divided by 2 as a answer okay or 3 is to 2 as you are putting it so I look at the question how have they been talking about ratios they have been talking about ratios as 2.5 to 1.5 and so on I need to talk the same language as what they are talking out here we are saying that the answer is 1.5 because it is 3 is to 2 so I'll mark the answer as 1.5 is it okay everybody understood the question Okay, I'll just make it slightly smaller. The monthly average rainfall chart based on 50 years of rainfall in Agra is shown in the following figure. Which of the following is true? Now what is a percentile they have explained to us? A percentile is the value below which a percentage of the data falls. So a 95 percentile means 95 percent of the data is less than that. Okay. So you have a graph and you have got four statements which are given to us. The question is which of the following statements are which of the following four statements are true. So try to figure out which are the four true statements.
Okay. So, can we have the answers, please? Okay. Uh, you still seem to be not sure. Let me ask you a question. Can I say that rains every month in July is higher than rains every month in February? Is this statement correct? In the last 50 years, rains every month in July have been higher than rains every month in February. Dishma Meghna, please comment. We can say that, right? That every year for the last 50 years, rains in July have been higher than rains in February. Vikas, Meghna, you are wrong. Okay. You remember the consistency question that we spoke about? Where we spoke about Sevag and Dravid. Okay. Let us now understand what is the meaning of a percentile. Okay, let us say in July, as you are seeing out here, it seems to be on an average raining around 600 mm, right? On an average for 50 years, it has been raining 600 mm. That does not mean that every month it is pretty close to 600. We are saying on an average, there could be one year which it might not have rained at all. They may have, uh, they may be having, uh, they may have been a drop. Okay, but the average is 600. There could be a few years where it was 800, 900, 1000. It compensated for the year of zero. Is that okay? So this average can be 600 in spite of an year being a pretty bad year. March, the average is around 100. Most of the years it is zero. There was this one particular year where it rained a thousand mm. The average of 50 years, because it hasn't rained anything for most of the years, but in a couple of years it has rained something and in one year it rained a thousand, the average seems to be coming out to a hundred. Because what is the average? The average is the sum total of all the values A, B, C, D, etc. divided by the number of years here, 50. Most of these are 0, 0, 5 mm, 10 mm, mm so on. One year, it may be rained a thousand mm, but your total is still around 5000 mm. So 5000 by 50 still yields 100, which is what March is. Right? And a 600 could have a zero year. Agreed? <coughs> Did you understand this please? The concept of averages, there could be outliers. Is that okay? So now try to answer the question please. On an average, it rains more in July than in December. So on an average it rains more in July is correct. Every year it rains more in July is not correct. So the first statement on an average, it rains more in July than in December. The first statement is true. Second statement. Every year, the amount of rainfall in August is more than that in January. False. One is true. <coughs> Two is false. Let's start eliminating answer options. One has to be true. But it is with two. Wrong. One is true. Two is not here. Maybe. One is not there. Out. One is not there. Out. This is your answer. Let's check. July rainfall can be estimated with better confidence than February rainfall. What do you mean by that? A July rainfall, the average 
is pretty close to the lowest level of rain and the highest level of rain for July. So it seems to be that the July rain is all within a narrow range compared to a February rainfall where the range, the this gap, this gap is much higher here than here. So yes, July rainfall is with better confidence because in fact June is even with a higher confidence. Okay? And amongst the worst confidence is maybe a Jan. In August, there is at least 500 mm of rainfall. In August, there is at least 500 mm. Yes, a few years may be more than 500. Maybe many years are more than 500. But in a one-off year, it could be very less. Right? Just like what we discussed. So this cannot be the answer. The answer is options 1 and 3. Okay?